good afternoon from Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, so this is a very impromptu vlog. Um, it is currently two o'clock in the morning on Friday night, technically, I guess very early Saturday morning. Um, so we just dropped off my bonus son. We did decide to drive instead of fly. Um, with the current situation with COVID, it just, it, it made a lot more sense to drive. We did just drop him off. Um, and we just decided that it got too late. We're tired. <laughs> um, so we're gonna stop here. We're gonna sleep. Um, I'm gonna definitely show you the room. And uh, yeah, we actually found um, public parking across the street. Um, that's currently where I am. So I'm actually in the Cincinnati parking garage, downtown Cincinnati. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was like literally half the price to park in this public garage versus paying, I think like $35 to valet the car when it's really not necessary. I'm tired, we need sleep. Anyway, so let me show you guys the hotel and let me show you the room. Here is the beautiful surrounding area of our hotel. So check out Cincinnati, Ohio. We are staying at a Hilton hotel, specifically a Hampton Homewood Suites hotel. It is so beautiful. This hotel is actually listed on the National Register of Historic Places, meaning this is the original building used for the Cincinnati Inquirer. This renovation was a $30 million building renovation. The upper floors were converted to hotel rooms and efforts were made to preserve as much of the historic integrity as possible. As you can see, they definitely did an amazing job with that. The elements of this hotel that really took me aback were the marble surfaces, the bronze structures, and the stone carved detail work, as well as the large chandeliers throughout the first floor lobby. Just look here at this stone carved elephant. Everything here is just so magnificent and it's just so luxurious looking. As you can see here, this is the completely renovated second floor of the lobby. It is just so beautiful and so luxurious. So we are in our room. This is where we're gonna call home for the night. Um, I'm very, very, very pleasantly surprised with how beautiful this room is. Um, but yeah, so we're staying in room 1103. Um, but yeah, let me show you guys around the room. This was so impromptu. I can't even stress that enough. We were actually planning on driving even more. Um, but we just, we are wiped out. We've literally been driving for like 16 hours. So let me show you around the room. It's super pretty. Here we have a little sink area, as well as a microwave, mini fridge, all that good stuff. Um, here you can, you can even have your ice. Um, they even have a little mini espresso maker over there, as you guys can see. Um, I was really impressed right away by this room. And then over here, we have a nice little couch. If we had guests, this would actually be perfect. It's just me and hubby tonight, but really nice big couch. And then here we have a little ottoman, as you guys can see, and then a nice little chair. And then if we go over here, we have a really nice desk area, like a really, really, really nice desk. And then a nice little Samsung TV. Not gonna lie, I kind of wish the TV was a little bigger, but you know, hey, beggars can't be choosers, especially not at this wonderful hour of almost three o'clock in the morning now. <laughs> Um, so let me take you to the bed, really nice king size bed, and then let's see how soft it is, because that's the important thing, because we are running on like five hours of sleep at this point, so let's see, not gonna lie, a little hard, but I'm not gonna complain, <laughs> I'm just so excited to be in the hotel room right now and get some sleep, I like that they have all Neutrogena products, very very impressed with the Neutrogena stuff, and then here's our little baby bathroom, <laughs> toilet area, shower. I really am impressed with the size of the shower. Really nice big walk-in shower. But overall, really nicely put together room. So this is our view. We are on the 11th floor. Really, really nice view in my opinion. I just love city views personally. Sorry, you're getting the reflection in the background of the room. Let me try to get a little closer. Um, but yeah, this is our view. Okay, so it's now the next morning, and overall, this has been a perfect hotel room, perfect location, perfect everything, but see that lovely little 80 degree thing there? Yeah, this is what we've been battling all night. So we actually switched rooms due to the heat in our last room. They put us in another room and AC doesn't work in this room either. It says it's working, but definitely not. This is what we had to sleep through. Okay, so 
Um, we're gonna be heading back to Florida today. Um, so I'll let you guys know some highlights and uh, yeah, see what see what the road trip brings us. So it's gonna be interesting, it's gonna be an, an interesting trip home. Okay, so we did leave the hotel now. Overall, we really did like the hotel. Um, we had a good experience, save for the AC being stuck on 80 degrees. Um, my husband seemed to have really liked the hotel as well. Um, when we got there, it was just so late. Um, we pretty much just passed right out. <laughs> um, yeah, we just slept. Um, we slept in super late. Definitely recommend that you guys stay there. Um, next time, if you're ever visiting Cincinnati, it's a very pretty hotel. Just make sure the AC works. <laughs> we are heading towards Florida. Right now, at the moment, we are actually in Kentucky. Um, I will say this, um, Kentucky, the, topo bleh, the topography is so pretty. Um, there's a lot of hills. It's just so pretty. Like, Florida's so flat. <laughs> um, we've been to California before, um, but I don't know, driving through Tennessee, driving through Kentucky, it's just, it's really pretty. It's, it's definitely different driving versus flying. Driving, you really get a feel for how beautiful everything is. It is just so beautiful here. Look at that, guys. It just, it's so different from Florida. I know I keep going on about the, the topography here, but it's just so, I don't even know. It's just the mountains and the hills. It just blows me away. Living in Florida my whole life, being born and raised, seeing things like this, like getting to drive through it is just so cool. I just love this. Okay, so when in Kentucky, obviously you have to visit the Colonel Sanders Museum. This is actually where it started, in Corbin, Kentucky. So we are going to visit the birthplace of KFC and take a look at the Harlan Sanders Museum. So let's go inside and see what it's all about. The birthplace of that tasty crunchy chicken right here. That wah 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 moment when you get here, drive all the way out here, and it is closed. So, birth of a legend, Kentucky's most famous citizen. Definitely a historic place in Kentucky, for sure. I'll stop here so you guys can read it. Mr. Colonel Sanders definitely picked a small little quaint spot. And here is the life of Colonel Sanders, finding his way. He was born in 1890. And then in 1906, he joined the army. And then, in 1930, he moved to Corbin, Kentucky, where he operates his first restaurant. And then, 1931, he moves across the road and begins Sanders Service Station, selling pure oil products. The new location had a dining room for restaurant customers. So because Colonel Sanders sold oil products, this here is reminiscent of the Sanders Service Station areas, as you can see. So when we're at the original KFC, of course we have to try chicken from there. Not really a big, big fried chicken fan, but I'm gonna try it because you know we're here and I got to so let's see how it is so honest review it's just KFC it's just regular it's good you know but at the end of the day it is just KFC so nothing special about this particular place but it's just kind of cool that it's the original one so we're back on the road again heading towards Florida and we keep seeing signs where they say fallen rock zone um, so yeah, we actually have to watch for these fallen rocks. They're not something that we have to worry about in Florida. And now we are entering Tennessee. And here, as we enter a little deeper into Tennessee, this is almost like kind of like an abandoned roadside theme park. So really, really cool. I just have to take a second to really show you guys the Tennessee mountains. They are just so beautiful and it's kind of like in the distance with some mist. It's just so beautiful. I can't get over these mountains. Look at this guys. Oh my God. Look how beautiful this is. There is literally no view like this. So we made it to Georgia. I have to show off this double rainbow. It's so pretty. Look at that. Okay guys, so it's now 8.43 PM and we made it to Atlanta. So we're gonna have some fun going around Atlanta, seeing what Atlanta has. I've never been to Atlanta, so we're gonna have fun. So we are now on Auburn Avenue, and as you can see, we are by the Ebenezer Baptist Church. This is actually the church where Martin Luther King Jr. preached. So I'm just beside myself that I actually get to see this in person. So here it is, the Ebenezer Baptist Church. Um, when Dr. King was giving his civil rights speeches, it was here, right here. And 
here we have Dr. King actually preaching inside the church, which is right there. Literally right there. How amazing is that? Ebenezer Baptist Church is a National Historic Landmark. This is where Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. had his funeral, and this is also where he preached. So as you guys can see, this is a beautiful sculpture. And then right below it, it actually explains it. So as it says, um, the sculpture com commemorates the historic principles that guided the life and work of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. His wife actually unveiled this monument as a tribute to her husband and as inspiration to others for fi to fight for dignity, social justice, and human rights. And then the sculpture reflects the ancient African ritual of lifting a newborn child to the heavens and reciting these words. Behold the only thing greater than yourself. So beautiful. Look at that, guys. And here is a much better view of the statue. Look at the detail in the statue. This is amazing. And here we have a quote from his wife. I'll let you guys read that. So beautiful. And here it says, non-violence or non-existence. I love that. It's so powerful. And here we have the final resting place of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. as well as his wife. And there's even his quote. And look how beautiful this is. Really look at this. This is probably the most beautiful grave I've ever seen. Here are some quotes by Dr. King's wife. I'll let you guys read that as well. And here we have the six principles of nonviolence. So I will show you guys that as well. Now this museum is closed, so we are here after hours, so that's why you see it being as dark as it is. Um, but this is what it looks like at night. You guys can come and see it. It is fully accessible. Okay, so we just left the Martin Luther King Jr. National Historical Park. It was absolutely beautiful. It was closed, like I said earlier. Um, they do open tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., but with our crazy driving schedule, um, we really barely even had time for that. Um, so we did just, we had to stop and see that because it's just, it's so powerful. Um, I find it really beautiful that his wife actually put that together after he passed. Um, so the fact that I get to see that, I get to see a little piece of civil rights history, just, it was just absolutely amazing. Now, what is visiting Atlanta, Georgia without getting some really good food? I am starving. <laughs> So, being that we are here kind of late, we pretty much have the whole restaurant to ourselves. So my husband ordered fried lobster. You don't generally see lobster tail looking like this, but oh my god, I cannot tell you how good it was. And here is our coconut shrimp appetizer with some dipping sauce. It's kind of a sweet dipping sauce, but it wasn't my favorite, but hubby really liked it. And then of course I got a seafood boil. It has snow crab, it has sausage, it has corn, and of course shrimp. It was amazing, like seriously delicious. Seafood boils in Atlanta, Georgia are something to be desired. Bye lazy crab, we'll miss you. This trip has been fun, it's been long, <laughs> very, very, very long. Um, but honestly driving just, it allowed me to see so many things that I never would have seen otherwise. I got to see mountains, I got to drive through Tennessee, I got to drive through Kentucky, I got to see where Kentucky Fried Chicken started, which was actually pretty cool. Um, this honestly was such an impromptu trip. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, definitely give me a thumbs up. Thank you for taking this crazy road trip with us. Um, subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this in the future. We're always traveling. We're always doing fun stuff. Thank you guys again so much for watching. Bye.